All right, here we are. I'm sorry you guys got some shadow here, but it's actually darker down here. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Let me see if I can adjust this. I don't know if it'll make a difference. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if that makes any difference for you guys, but hopefully, hopefully it will. Come back out. There we go. All right. I think it's a probably best I'm going to get. All right. So anyway, I'm going to paint this painting called Blesling. It's actually for a friend of a friend. And uh, so I want to get it done and get it out to him. There's a lot of new things in this that I haven't tried before. So yeah, it's going to be kind of exciting. So first of all, the background itself is going to be modeled well not really modeled is not the right word but out of focus so it'll be you know like we're looking into a field so there'll be some yellows and different colors of yellows and greens probably back up in there and then um, if you remember from the underpainting we had this strap that was um, it's all twisted around so we'll be able to mess with that and uh, some, some different colors that we haven't dealt with before so I'm going to show you what my original palette's going to look like, a little bit like. So, for each of these colors, with the exception of orange, we're going to mostly use blue, and we'll make three different three different uh, values of that. Red, we'll make three different values of that, ranging from lizard and crimson, but that's why this orange is here. Uh, this bright red will be the, the bright red of his sweater, but the highlight, so what, really what we're making is, we're making um, a mid-tone the dark tone and then the highlight and then uh, we'll use white for the ultra highlight we don't want to put to lighten the red we don't want to take and put white into that to, to raise its value because if we do it's just going to turn pink and who wants to boil the boy in pink sweater and then uh, Axel stop he's being a pest today oh my gosh anyway so we'll add this cat orange to lighten that red and then uh, you know, in the background we'll, we'll use some different yellows and, Kind of mess up with that and then this green we will mix with a little bit of yellow uh, as well as we move in and if we want if we decide we want to darken it some more we'll add some blue to that so we'll be mixing three different tones of every color and then in addition to that we'll be applying some uh, liquid clear and today we will be cleaning the brushes probably the whole time we'll be cleaning these brushes with um Uh, baby oil. So, carrying the baby oil in this little container. Inside the container, it's a double clamp container. You can get these at Hobby Lobby if you want one. Um, it has a little tray, a little cup. It has a little sc scrubby holes in it, so you can just scrub your brush off as you're cleaning it. So we'll set that over there and try not to forget to use it. But yeah, you know I mean. Also, I'm going to try out some new brushes today, so let me go get those real quick. I'm not sure which set is which. Bought two new sets of brushes, so let me see if this is the synthetics. Yeah, these are the synthetics. So, talking about a deal, I found these synthetics. They're my Artscape brushes in a case. I got these for five bucks. 4.95 to be precise. So I'm, I'm anxious to try these out, but mostly I think I'll probably be using a flat, maybe a couple flats, maybe some of these larger different flats. So let's give them a spin and see how we do. All right, so we're going to start off by oiling down the canvas and getting it ready to go. I think I'll do that today with this horsehair flat. We'll be using that for blending, really. All this liquid clear. We're gonna wipe a bunch of this back off. We don't want the canvas to be too slick because if we, if it is, then it's just gonna run off. So I painted this underpainting in burnt umber. So you got the original 11 by 14 canvas. It's got 
three coats of gesso. I'll make my own gesso. So it's got three coats of gesso on it. And then I'm uh, going to use burnt umber to create the brunette underpainting. Just, just burnt umber to lay out all the highlights and shadows for this paint. So really we kind of did like the whole painting until, you know, with just in one color. We could, we could have sh probably shipped it like it is and it would, people would have been happy with it, but that wasn't the plan. So, and it's not a, it's not like it's a, um, a commission or anything. You know, sometimes you just meet people and at least I do, you know, I kind of see them. You know, it, it kind of depends on which art I'm happen, happen to be doing. Uh, sometimes I'll be doing like a ceramic type art and I see something, I go, oh, that person will like that. And I make it for them and I just give it to them at Christmas or whatever. Other times, um, I'll be working and I'll be like, oh, that person. And some next thing you know, they end up in my one of my novels. So <laughs> it's kind of this way, though. Uh, seldom, on, on the last painting I did, Emily Scout, um, I actually did that painting for Emily because she mentioned to me that she used to have a scout and she really did like it and, you know, da da da. And I thought, ah, oh, you know what, I'll go out and find one. So I went out and found a reference photo and did that just for her. I don't do that very often. But when I saw the reference photo for this, I was like, you know what, I know somebody that would really probably like that. So, all right, so we're going to start off working on the background. So we're starting with some cad yellow. Hey, Cloudy. Hey, Larry. Can you guys hear me okay? I hope so. Let me know. Say something. Say hi. Hey, Billy. All right. So we're going to start off making with the mid-tone will be cad yellow. And then we'll add a little bit of this. And then I think to darken it a little bit, we'll take some... Let's try that. Let's take some yellow and just a touch of cat orange. Because I don't need a lot of... You know, using this in this way, in a painting like this, you don't need a lot of paint. You just don't. So we'll start off with the mid -tone. Why not? We'll just kind of put this on here in different spots. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's just kind of... Let's be loose with that and just kind of put it all around. I think that'll work just as well. We'll start off this way. We'll just start off since it's going to be the mid-tone. We'll just kind of start that way. And then we'll, uh, we'll just add the other tones to it. Now the, this underpainting is going to lend itself to, to shadowing and in, in the right spots and that kind of stuff. So that'll be kind of easy to work with. Now we're going to paint right up onto his clothes because with this yellow because we'll uh, we can wipe that back later. But we don't want to create a halo around him, which means you know a place where there's no paint and it looks like the the, per, the subject is detached from the painting. We don't. Want, that's not what we're looking for. At least that's not what I'm looking for. So oh, I picked up some orange. That's okay. We'll just blend this out. It's a darker tone anyway, so it's okay. Now, question is, oh, I see how I hit it. Okay, no problem. No problem. Happy little accident. Now, as I start to move into some of this more detail, I'll be, I'll be painting more like at the end of this brush because it's a very light tap. Um, well, the, the, well, I guess I, let me explain. Um, the, the sketch is done in charcoal, and then, um, that's a really good question. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, the sketch was originally done in charcoal, and then, well, let me kind of back up even farther from that. Originally, the canvas, uh, just a regular 11 by 14 canvas, uh, it's got three coats of gesso on it, white gesso, uh, that I make myself, and then, the, uh, then I put the charcoal sketch on it, and then um, after that, uh, I sprayed it with a fix-it. Uh, Krylon's workable fixative, F-I-X-A-T-I-F. You can buy it on Amazon. You can probably buy it at an art store, too, but it's cheaper on Amazon. 
and um, I sprayed that down to hold that to hold that because um, I wanted to put the underpainting on so then we covered the entire canvas with um, burnt umber mixed with some linseed oil and then using uh, mostly q-tips we show you here so mostly like these little guys you can see except I just dropped it on the floor of course I did Maybe what would be a painting and drop stuff on the floor. But using Q-tips, we just kind of wipe the color back and in, uh, into different spots, uh, slowly and surely, until we got. Now some of the ultra highlights, we kind of we did, we took a little bit of linseed oil on the brush and just kind of wiped the the uh, burnt umber back. But uh, mostly, we just did it with a Q-tip. All of this part up here, we wipe back with a towel, just a shop towel. To, so we stained the we wanted to stain the canvas, but we wanted to create, you know, this yellow is kind of kind of bright. So we wanted to get a lot of that for number. We wanted a slight stain to create the shadows, but not so much that you know it was infringing on the painting. So there's that. These are oils. These are all oils. Did that I get your question? Hey, hey, Amy. Hey. Is it, is it Luz? Did I say it right? Luz Maria Perez? So now we're, we're applying the first color layers. Um, this this particular technique, this Brunei, this, of this burnt umber stuff, um, is something I picked up taking uh, Marion Dutton's um, portrait course. Uh, I have followed Marion. This is my fourth year to paint. And I followed Marion that whole time, and uh, I think she's a really special lady. So when she came out with this new portrait course, I didn't really know so much if I wanted to paint portraits, but I wanted to start adding people into my pictures, into my paintings. And so, you know, that just seemed like a logical place. And so, you know, I haven't really started doing a lot of portrait work. I have done a little bit of portrait work. I've done some portraits of a couple of friends of mine, and uh, they were kind enough to let me practice on their on their faces and uh, you know we went from there but yes so I kind of picked this this technique up from that and I really liked it a lot so I just kind of stuck stayed with it since then all right so now we've got this yellow all on here and that'll be good and you know what I think I'll add a little bit of that yellow to this guy's skin he's got on tennis shoes so I don't have to do that too much but this will uh, add a little bit of warmth into for his face later so how's that showing up for you guys? Can you see it okay? It looks okay on the camera, but I'm just kind of blending around. All right, so let me just take a little bit of baby oil and clean this off. And then I want to kind of blend this, make sure I have a nice even coat like all around the. Now I'm using synthetic brushes today. Usually you see me, I'm, I'm using goat hair brushes, but not today. So I'm trying to use new brushes as well. I'm always trying new stuff. So if you want to see somebody that makes a lot of mistakes, it's a good place to come. <laughs> I guess I, I'm kind of, kind of crazy that way. All right. But, you know, that's uh, kind of always been, been me. If, if you're not a little bit uncomfortable, then you're not really trying hard enough, probably. So, so I just stay uncomfortable all the time. All right, so we're just going to use this brush. I'll just keep wiping it out. I'm going to wipe this color back a little bit. Just kind of pull all the paint strokes out of it, not the brush strokes. All right. Now, as I said earlier, for those of you coming in late, I wanted to, I've got on my palette um, one, two, three, four base colors, and in, in that we're, we're mixing, uh, we're creating, uh, this is the, a mid-tone for instance, for the mid-tone yellow, and then we've got a highlight color and a darker color. So now we're going to move a little bit toward the darker color, and I don't have enough of that made up, but probably it might do enough, let's see. I'm gonna kind of... No, that's not really dark enough. Let's try. So I may have to. So I'm using cat orange to darken this yellow. And I just want to kind of make it a little bit splotchy here and there. So I just have to go. So I'm gonna go straight to cat orange now. We're just kind of giving a little bit of. Things in the background. All right. 
And then let's go with a little bit of highlight. Where do I want this highlight? I'm going to come mostly like right off in here. Because this is the main topic, right? So we're going to kind of I like this young man. This, I'm actually painting this for a friend of a friend. They don't know what's coming, but they're a photographer. And my bestest buddy is, is good friends with this person. So, you know, I thought, really, I don't know if it's as much for the person I'm painting it for as they asked for my best buddy. To... She's going to give it to him, so that'll be kind of nice. All right. Let's add a little bit more of this highlight like right out. I'm going to kind of make this horizontal a little bit out here. Just to kind of push it back in the background now. If you guys have any other questions, just put them up there. I'll, I'll take a look here in just a second. Just closing in around his camera. I'm not worried too much about getting it on his color, uh, getting any of this color on him because we're going to we can just wipe some of that back here in a second. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. A little bit more of that up here, just to kind of push the field farther back. Now, this is a, kind of a bit of a new approach for me because I have usually have a sky, and this time we don't. We just got kind of a background back there in the bag. I usually have some kind of a topic in the background, like a fence, or, but not this time. We're not going to do it. I just want to try something different this time. All right, now, I've also got... We're going to take a little bit of this yellow and some green. And a little bit more green than that, I guess. Let's try this. Put some grass and stuff back here. A little bit of, just a little. We don't really want too much of that to show up because it's way back there in the background. We're just kind of touching it lightly. No more questions yet? Okay. All right. So I'm not going to paint the foreground until I get to him. So let's start working on the young man. So let me, I'm cleaning the brushes today with uh, these fire, these uh, synthetic brushes with um, baby oil. So brand new to me. I'm not. I'm not used to using these, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how this goes. All right, now before we start applying the colors to this guy, we want to take some of the color back off, right? So I'm not too worried about this strap because the strap's going to be sort of a, a black and gray color, probably a dark gray. By the time I get there, I'll figure it out. But we're just going to move a little bit of this yellow. But that'll keep us from having a, a halo around him. So, and then I don't know what we'll figure out which shirt we want to work on this shirt or his vest. I think we'll work on his vest first, and then we can come back and. Well, no, I guess I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. I don't guess. Just have to pick one. Oh, I know what. Let's do this first. Let's. Uh, His hair will be really easy to do, but let's just take the tiniest bit of um, lizard and crimson. Let me look at the reference photo. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of come right in here and just add some of this. Those are crimson to his skin. Then I'm just going to wipe the brush out. Then we'll just kind of blend this out. Create that little bit of a shadow right here around his face. And then let's take, hmm, that was script liner in this new thing. Oh, yeah. I bought a new set of brushes. I got these brushes for five bucks. In, new in the case. I was like, wow, really? I, I can't pass it up. I found some just like them. Well, not just like them, but close, closely. I mean, they might have been like them. Same brand, same case, kind of different color, I think. Um, last year, and I sent them to a friend of mine. So 
when they showed up again, I was like, oh, I hope they show up even more again. Now we're just adding a little bit of this darker shadow right up close to his face. Just to kind of get this in here. There's another shadow right there. But yeah, you can. A little too much. Tried to spread that blue a little too far. Okay, let's see. We've got he's got on a a blue shirt and it's got some we'll go ahead and put the let's put the shadows in. So let me exactly look at all of these. Now this is ultramarine blue right out of the tube. I hardly ever use black for my colors. I don't, it kind of kills the color. But everything I try to touch with it, so. Now we're just kind of scribing in these um, shadows around his sweater. He has on a red sweater. And we'll blend that with some was there in crimson in here in a minute. Hopefully by now you guys can see it taking shape a little bit. Hey Kristen. Oh, have you watched them, Billy? You you like them pretty good? Uh, you know that that's all kind of new to me, so it it always helps when I get feedback on that. So all right. Let's, how are you doing, Kristen? All right, we're just laying in this shadow right here. Right here on his arm. And we'll blend that in a minute, but it'll work, it'll work for right now. So as you can see, we're not we're not using much paint just yet. Not yet. We've got old blue jeans, so. We're just kind of marking that shadow right there. We're not going to lean on that shadow too hard just yet because yeah, we can get his blue jeans straight now. All right, so let's go. Let's finish up these shadows on his shirt. Now, one thing I have learned in the last year is that these sh crinkles in people's clothes really had a lot of detail to, the, to a painting and an interest to the painting. It's not something that people will call out, but it's something that they like to see. I mean, it just, I don't know, it just makes it a little bit crisper. Is crisper a word, or is it more crisp? I don't know. <laughs> You'd think being a novelist, I would, I would have that figured out. But, yeah, I don't think I've ever had to use that word in a book yet. All right. And then we're going to be looking at the bottom of his tennis shoe when this is all said and done. Because he's got his foot turned around. I can remember when I used to turn my foot around like that. Alright. And we'll come back and we'll add some more to this in, in a little while. But to this part. But it's enough to get us going here, I think. Add a couple more here. Here and there. Any questions you guys got, just put them up there and 
I'm glad to answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. But I'm not. I'm not too shy about saying I don't know. Or usually, more likely, if it, especially if the question intrigues me, I'll be like, oh, but I don't know. I'll go find out. <laughs> so uh, we did a video like that well, last week. We had somebody ask me how to make um, African skin tones, and I was like, Shh, I don't know. Let me go. I'll spend an afternoon playing with that and figuring that out. But it was okay. It was fun. Something I didn't know. Something I can add to my repertoire. All right, now. Okay. Let's clean this script liner for now. We'll come back and add some more shadows in a little bit, but let's clean it for now. Salpy, hello. I was just, just talking about you asking me that question and it gave me a reason to make another couple, three videos. So that worked out pretty good for me and you. All right, so. Okay, let's, uh, let's save his hat to last, but let's go ahead and kind of, let's work a little bit on his sweater. So I think we'll lay the mid-tones in first. Make sure. So now hopefully you can see that we're we're allowing that brown to show through because that's going to show us where the it'll help with the shadows, right? And you'll see me. I'll paint with one side of the brush and then I'll paint with the other. I'm just kind of wiping the the. Uh, Running out of paint on one side, so I just switch to the other side. Because there's so little paint in this. There we go. That looks pretty good. So, if you think about it, you've really done a lot of the work in the underpainting on this, right? Figuring out the values and, you know, where you want the shadows to be. My shadowing is a little different than than the uh, original photo. Right. So, Kristen, are you still there? If, you, if you're still there, say so, so I can have something more to tell you. Uh -huh. Now let's start adding some shadows in here. So we're going to step down in color now into a lizard crimson. And we're going to add that into this sweater. We don't have to add a lot because we've got shadows underneath of this stuff already. Right? But we need enough. All right, and I'm just going to wipe the brush off. I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to wipe it off. And we're going to blend all this. And really what we're kind of doing is going right where the lizard and crimson is and splitting the brush in half between that and the bright red. There we go. All right, now we want to add a little bit of highlight to it. So I need a little bit of lizard crimson up to the top here too. Particularly right along here. All right, and then I also need some, no, this, this might be a little bit more difficult, right in here. So it comes from that sleeve. There we go. All right, and let's put a little bit more lizard crimson right along this shadow. There we go. All right, now, from there, we're going to go to the highlight, and so we're going to pick up some cat orange to go with this red, and that's how we're going to raise the value of the 
with the red. If we add white, if you add white to red, what color do you get? You get green, right? I mean, you get green. No, you do not. You get pink. <laughs> you get green. No, duh. All right, sorry, y'all. Let's have a relapse. <laughs> That's funny. All right, there we go. There we go. It looks pretty good. Let's add a little bit more to that. Right back here. On the back of his sweater as well. Maybe a little bit on his tummy right here. There we go. All right, now, now I am going to clean the brush. And then we're going to blend that. We'll start to remove the crispness from some of these, these lines. Get outside the line. That's okay. Let me fix it. Just like that. And we're just adding the crinkles to his sweater. A little better, a little more. A little more better. Now, rather than pull this in, I'm going to try to see if I can stipple it in. I don't know if I can. We'll find out. It looks okay, I guess. All right, now, let's wipe the brush off. I'm going to wipe it off some more. And then let's just kind of work on right around this edge. We just want to pull that sleeve out a little bit. There we go. We're just kind of smoothing these lines out, blending those shadows out. Okay. Let's go with, let's clean the brush, I guess, because we're going to change colors. So let's clean the brush. Let me look and see if there's any questions. Hey, Colin. There she is. Yeah, pink. <laughs> Sure, it's not green. God. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. So this is the mid tone I've picked for this, and we'll see if I if I can like it. I don't know if I like it or not. We'll find out. So there's my bestest buddy. I was telling you, telling y'all about. This, she has another friend who's a photographer. So we're going to see if we can't surprise him. Because that's what we do. That's what artists do. Now this is not the highlight color. This is just the mid-tone going in here. You might notice on the mid-tone from the very beginning, we've kind of we kind of kind of free with the mid-tone and then we kind of start detailing stuff up with the darker tones I'll clean myself a spot Alright, so I'll tell you what we're going to do here. I don't like the way that looks, so we're going to take it back off. I don't know why it's so streaky like that. I might have taken some of that baby oil up to the canvas and spread it out. I don't know, but we'll fix it. We'll fix it. I'm not even sure I like that tone, to tell you the truth. I... Alright.
Hare Kata. Alright, so we clean the brush out really good now. Let's take and mix it mid mix mix ugh, mix a mid tone. So I'm gonna take some ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is really, really strong. So you just need to make sure you put just a little bit of that stuff into your mix. Alright, let's try this. Interesting enough, ultramarine blue, back in the Renaissance days, was a very rare color. And it was so rare that they saved it only to do paintings of the Virgin Mary. I'm sure there were some rebels out there somewhere that used it for something else, but by and large, that's what they used it for. I'm going to come back and add some more shadows to this in a minute and some highlights. There we go. Now, I'll show you here in a second. You might notice if you look at this brush, you can see that I'm mixing. See how I've got I'm kind of just mixing on the brush as I go. So I'm just kind of mixing the colors up here. Now I'm going to take that color though, and I'm going to add a little bit more of ultramarine blue to it. And I'm going to use that color, hopefully. A little bit darker, I think. A little darker. One more time. Use that color to paint his blue jeans. And what will really make these blue jeans and this shirt and stuff stand out is when we add shadows to it and the, um, yeah, okay. We add the shadows in and when we add the highlights in, that's what really makes them kind of stand out. Let's not pull it up onto his shoes though. I don't have to say right here in the middle of doing this. It's just well, <laughs> it might be there's some of some you might be thankful of for. All right, let's see. Those like, might look like kind of broad strokes to you guys, but they're not going to be so much in a minute when we blend them. Alright. So I want to pause for a second while we let that set up just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I want to add some more shadows into his shirt and a few other places. So I do my drill. So it was raining here again today for the umpteenth time. Ugh. Umpteenth day in a row. I keep trying to get out. It's helping my potatoes grow, but man, I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. Now we're just blending a little bit. 
And if we pick any of this paint up on the brush, we're going to have to kind of wipe it out of the brush as we go. Okay, let's go to what I do that script on. Come here, you. All right. I'm just kind of sketching this out right now, the shoe, just so I don't lose the context. I'm not too worried about this. So anytime you see me take the brush away, I'm probably taking paint off the brush in this part because I'm just kind of blending these colors in. Let's work on his shirt just a little bit more and then we'll come back and finish up the pants. reference photo. Yeah, I missed the spot. Alright, luckily I kept all the paint in the right place. So, so where did his other arm go? Questions, guys? You guys are being awful quiet today. It's kind of adding these shadows in here or something. Shadows on his fingers. So we're going to start off with the lizard and crimson. And that'll add some warmth to his skin. And we'll add some deeper shadows here in a second. So let me get another brush out to blend with. <sighs> Let's just use this girl. How about you, babe? Bum, 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 bum. So now we're trying purposely to pull some of this some crimson onto his skin. Make his hand his hands on the outside, right, of where this where the light can hit. So you know you don't want it to be completely as dark as the, the inside of his skin. The inside of his where his face is. All right, and then let's put some darker shadows. Switch over to blue. Switch over to blue. 
and these darker shadows. Even though they're cooler, they'll add a little more depth to that and make that nice and firm. So to make the skin tone, Salpy, if you're still there, <coughs> we made uh, yellow and then added alizarin crimson to it and then added blue. So from our lesson the other day, it's kind of just utilization of what I told you guys on that video. All right, so let's add, I think, let's add a little bit more shadow, I think, over here. A little darker shadow right here. And then maybe kind of pull that down a little bit in here, like that. And put this, put this shirt in, into a shadow a little bit more. Okay. Let's clean the brush. Reset. Clean the brush. Clean the other brush. Set this brush back for now. All right. So you guys still with me so far? I reckon. No. Everybody's left. <laughs> oh well. What the heck? That's what I get for being boring. I reckon. All right. So let's see. I want. I don't know who I'm talking to, or who I think I'm talking to, but... Okay. Now there should be... I missed the spot. So let's fix that before I forget. Because I don't want to be sitting here a year from now and go, oh, look at that. I missed this spot. Right here. Should be some yellow. So I'm just kind of squeeze that in there behind him. No, let's work on this. I don't know what we're going to work on next. We'll work on something. Hang on a second. I'll tell you what. Let's... Now you guys know why I record these things in advance, because then you don't have to sit and watch me. So let's where did the camera last maybe. But so let's finish up the tennis shoes, I guess. They are a third color of blue. So we'll try some of this. Dude, guess what? We're going to change this from the reference photo. Come back here. Change this from the reference photo. I think we're going to... Like I said, I on blue tennis shoes. You can have on red tennis shoes. They look better anyway. Alright, so let's get... Uh, it's my smallest flat smallest flat in this group. Oh, it's not a flat, but it'll work. Maybe. We'll see. So let's pull... Let's put some of this on here. 
So let's start off with darkest color first. Now, a lot of this tennis shoe, we're going to paint it, but then it's going to be behind um, grass and stuff. So, yeah. But we'll put it in here anyway. We'll know it's back there, right? All right. And on the bottom of the shoe, where did it go? On the bottom of the shoe, all of this part is that same color all the way around to like right here. And then it's not like that on the heel, right? Alright. Okay, doggy. And then there's a little bit this way. So let's put that in. Alright. And we need some more up here on the tip. Now the tip's going to look a little darker because it's got more shadow in the underpainting under there. Alright, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to paint this in for right now. Then we'll add the white back to it. Just cleaning this up a little bit. And I don't like that. I don't like that highlight on his pants right there. So. take that off. Let's, uh, let's clean the brush. Okay. Now we're going to switch back to the script liner. We're going to take some of this alizarin crimson and some of this blue together. And just levy out his shoes. finish those up so I think we will. So let's go had a couple of these white circular dots. And then, yeah, I'll leave that. Now it appears, let's see, let me look at that real quick. All right, let's go ahead and paint this strap. So let's get, um, I will need a little bit of, a tiny bit of black for that, but not much. So let's get uh, that out here. Alright, 
let's try that. That's too much brush, I think, but let's see. Let's do this first. You part it. There we go. Oh. oh, I almost dropped my brush right on the canvas. It would have been so bad. It would have been more than a happy little accident. Let's go with this dark gray. It's too dark for that. Let's go with it up here. We're just kind of stippling this on with a script liner. Probably the hardest way in the world I could do it, but it is what it is. Let's mix up. Third tone. Okay, let's try that. This might look like white as it goes on, but it's not. It might look like white. I hope it looks kind of a silverish white color. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Everybody gone. That's okay. That's okay. All right, I'll wipe the brush off. I 
Where's that? Okay. All right. So we need
kind of dirt. Everybody came back. No, it wouldn't come clean. You think he's going to like it, Em? It's almost done. Still got a few minutes, a few minutes to go here. No, this brush wouldn't come clean. And what was weird about it is um, when I put it in thinner, looks like about half the bristles fell out when I did that. So I don't think I can, I probably have to keep using them a different way. started now. Let's just... It seemed to do okay in the in the uh, baby oil, but hang on, I'll show it to you in a second. Yeah. Look at it. Can you see that? Makes it a little tough to paint that way. <laughs> I'll just have to use baby oil on it, I guess. But. All right, let's switch brushes. Yeah, see, here's a the one I used earlier using a baby oil. And, Still looks fine, but all right. So let's see. I wanted to get. Let's go ahead and do this part too. Since we're doing it, let's get the color up there. All right. Now let's start working this. Let's see where I want that to be. I guess up toward the top. Ah! Probably have a little more get back to that in a minute. Let's add the fine line to that here in a second. It might be easier to pull this down. Don't do that. Thank you. 
like that. There we go. Not exactly the color I wanted, but it's okay. All right. Let's kind of cut through some this red. So what I'm kind of doing is cutting through the paint. Get ready to lay this darker color in. I almost went right back to the dinner. That would have been bad. Okay, let's add. I'm going to move switch to one of my regular flats because. Here we go, let's use this one. So this will probably come out. This part will probably look kind of white, but it's actually bluish white. We'll let this kind of shadow off at the bottom down here. There we go. That's better. I'm just adding some bright red into this lizard and crimson. And then let's try this. Got that shadow in just like that. Thank you, Harriet. Incredibly talented. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm talented. I'm persistent. That's <laughs> I don't know if I'm so talented, but I'm persistent. Let's clean up the edges around this hat. Things I can do with a Q-tip. So this painting is for uh, a friend of my best friend, Emily, and uh, we're going to surprise him. We hope to surprise him. He's a photographer, a very good photographer. So we just wanted to give him a little bit of a an acknowledgement that he's not out there all by himself. We, we see him. All right. And before I finish that up, I need to add a little bit of a lizard and crimson. Let me wipe that brush off clean. Here we go. Right around his ear. Just to get, make that show up a little better. Add some shadow right there on his neck. And then we'll take a little bit of this ultramarine blue and put it right behind that ear so that it shows up. All right, let's put a little bit of highlight on that. Oh, you know what? I can't do that. All right, let's see. Let's see. What can I do? Oh, yeah, I can. Never mind. I can do that. I don't want to delete this brown too much. I just want to add just a touch, touch, touch highlight. Just like that. All right. Let's... Go back to this rose, or 
tulip or poppy. I guess it's a poppy. For the last set of rows, but I guess because I like roses, I don't know. All right, so let's let's outline this rose. You know, I don't think most people who are not artists understand that if an artist gives you something of his work, I give away books to people that are really special to me since I'm a writer. And, you know, I don't think people understand really even doing that. Writers are giving you something very personal. Like they just think of it as like, oh, it's a book. But, yeah, that doesn't really doesn't really matter. It would be nice if they understood, but it didn't have to. All right, now let's brighten this up, baby. All right, baby, here we go. I'll put a little bit of texture in this flower as well. There we go. And then let's add a little pink. That's probably enough. Let's try it. Maybe a little more pink. No. I don't like the way that's mixing up. I get it. I was trying to swipe some gray out of there and use that, but I don't think it's going to work. I need some titanium in here. I just put it on the I just put it on the palette and I'm gonna be it. start moving toward the fine line and stuff. Let's go with a little bit of sap green and a little bit of brown, a little bit of burnt umber. And just throw a little bit of cad yellow just for the heck of it. Let's see how that looks. Looks like I didn't flatten the brush, that's what it looks like. Here we go. Alright. Add a little more green to that, and I think these other guys that's too much paint. Good lord, calm down. So I'm doing this with a an angle brush. I find I can fine line as, as well with an angle brush pretty much as I can with a script liner. As long as there's not a lot of curves. I treat the angle brush a little bit different for curves. So let's go now and let's finish out this foreground. Do that with, uh, let's see, let's do a combination of a, a flat and a fan brush.
need this with a bit of yellow in it, I think. Let's do that some more. That looks pretty good. May not need to flat. see a strap I missed. So let's see. I missed this strap right here. There we go. Great. Now we gotta add just a little bit of shadow to that. We'll be done. We'll be done. We'll be done. Let me clean this fan brush. I'm cleaning all my brushes now because I tend to get up and walk away and leave them. Hey, here's my sister. Shirley, how are you? All right, what's I gonna do? Oh yeah, I had some shadows. Where did I go? Come here, you strip liner. Okay. This will be a tiny little bit of script lining, but it's okay. All right, guys, I think that'll do it. Uh, you know what, maybe I can add a little bit of it. Hang on a second, I got one more thing I think I want to do. Let's add just a little bit of highlight to this young man's shoes right here. Just a little bit, just a little bit. And maybe some over here too. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Bestest buddy of mine, you still out there? Are you, are you, are you? Does this work for you? You're going to be presenting it to him. Alrighty. Okay, guys. I think that'll do it for now. We will be... What time is it? Let me know what time it is. Well, quarter after one. I think we're going to take a break, eat some lunch, and then we'll come back and I have another painting that I'd like to do today that I think I have time to do. Um, so, hopefully, you guys will tune in assuming, assuming we get a chance to do that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.